in this video, um, we're going to look at um, horizontal beam lateral um, projections of the knee. Jacqueline Marjorie Simpson, 1976. She's fallen from her bike. She's grazed her knee with swelling and she's unable to wait there. Query fracture. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, as she's recumbent, we're going to be doing a lateral with horizontal beam. Do the AP projection first and then set up for the horizontal beam lateral, not the other way around. Okay, so um, I'm going to bring our patient into the, to the room. Um, now, you can do this medial lateral, but I think nearly every radiographer in the land will be doing it. Um, lateral medial because it's just so much more convenient um, so what we're going to do here um, for you and for the patient is we're going to pick a um, in my case because I know that um, in our scenario that the receptor with the grid works way better um, so that's what I'm going to use but you might not use the grid you might use something different so what we're going to do is going to put the receptor between the patient's knees um, and then we're going to abduct the limb slightly. It's important that we get the condyles to superimpose one on the other and to get the, the knee um, in a lateral aspect then the ankle needs to be externally rotated. So one of the a common error is not to externally rotate the, um, the limb enough. So once we've got that positioned correctly, then we add our marker. And if you were doing this in the um, department, you'd probably add an arrow pointing up in the direction of gravity. Um, okay, we're going to rotate the tube round. And we're going to um, bring it in to the patient. And we're going to drop it down. So the centering point is the same as it is for the mediolateral in that it's an inch. 2.5 centimeters below and um, posterior, so inferior and posterior to the um, apex of the patella. So something like that. But we can go a little bit further down. Maybe turn our light beam diaphragm a little bit and raise the, bring the tube out because we're 84 centimeters at the moment. So we'll take it out to 100. Okay, so. Something like 65 and 5.6 might work for us. Close this. Okay, so um, I think I've anything I've probably over externally rotated this. Um, we don't actually have um, a lipohemarthrosis here. This is where it would show up. So we've got our fat pad here. Um, and the fat pad would be um, pushed up um, if we had an effusion. Um, so we've got the pre, so what we've got here is we've got the um, pre-femoral um, fat layer, and then we've got the fat that sits, um, you know, um, anterior to the um, synovial pouch the prepatella bursa. So the prepatella bursa with its synovial fluid is lying somewhere in here. But it's too small to see. It's probably just it's probably here actually. You can see just a lighter gray just there. 
if we got blood in that, then it would actually push out and it would push a strip of fat up and you'd be able to measure more than 10 millimeters in thickness here. And if um, there was um, blood in it, then you'd see a fluid level um, because both fat and blood would congregate in the, in the bursa and you'd end up with a fluid level. Um, which, as we said, discussed, needs a few minutes just to collect. So we need to leave the leg in this position before you collect it. So I think, we'd, given the distance here between the fibula and the tibia, I think I've got um, to over, I've overextended, over externally rotated this. So what we'll do is we'll turn it in slightly and see how that affects our image. So now we're in a really nice position with a very nice lateral, with both our uh, medial and lateral condyles superimposed of the femur. Um, so that's quite nice. In terms of centering point, I have centered slightly high um, and slightly proximal. So let's just um, correct that and see whether that has any impact on the joint. So what we're going to do is we're going to move distally and posteriorly and see what happens. Besides that I wouldn't be doing this um, on a patient because I think that that is a diagnostic image. Um, but just we're just seeing what difference it makes when you actually center in the joint space compared to a little bit high and a little anterior. It hasn't really made a lot of difference. I think the condyles of the tibia are now more superimposed than they were, but only very, very slightly. Um, yeah, so I couldn't, I couldn't claim that there's a, a huge improvement in the projection given one inch um, difference in centering. Which just goes to prove that one shouldn't be too worried about centering points as long as you've got all of the anatomy on um, and you know the centering point can be a bit more um, flexible than maybe the books um, explain it to be.